Hey folks, this is Rick Buck. I'm Chief Privacy Officer at Wirewheel. And uh, thanks for joining on our uh, weekly LinkedIn Live privacy roll-up. Uh, wait, but why? Uh, that was Commissioner Slaughter's question last week to the IAPP. Uh, the IAPP happily was back in business uh, in San Diego last week uh, and uh, ran a successful uh, PSR conference. Um, and uh, Commissioner Slaughter uh, was the keynote to close the conference and had some interesting and provocative thoughts about uh, what she and others at the FTC are thinking about. Um, we only have a short period of time to talk about this, so I'm going to be brief in my overview on her remarks. Uh, but I would encourage you all, if you haven't already done so, to read the, in the complete transcript. Um, and we will pop a link to the transcript into the chat in this uh, broadcast. Um, and so, again, I encourage you all uh, uh, to read that thoroughly. Um, her food for thought uh, was focused around what the future of data uh, might look like and how the FTC is thinking about all this stuff. Um, her goal was to uh, ensue that, um, you know, that the FTC is thinking about new ways uh, about uh, privacy uh, should be approached uh, and legislation and technology that should support that. Um, so um, as you know, the FTC is in the middle of a major transition. They've had new personnel, they've had new leadership, um, and they're changing their perspective about uh, the direction that, um, that the FTC needs to go. Um, and here's a few of the things that she was thinking about. One, is privacy still the key issue? And I'll define that in just a second. Two, is notice and choice the primary model that we should be basing uh, um, uh, the way in which we market to people and collect their information? Um, three, um, should policy options be limited just to opt in and opt out? Um, is what she refers to as the surveillance advertising uh, model necessary to support uh, advertising supported uh, internet services. Um, and then lastly, what's the FTC's role uh, in absence of federal legislation? So let's talk about uh, these each in a little bit more detail. Um, so, um, you know, privacy, why are we just thinking about this uh, from the lens uh, of a privacy perspective? And let's talk about that. The commissioner opens and says, I share the view that privacy is a fundamental right but that focusing on privacy uh, excludes other critical data issues, right? Um, it doesn't think about dishonest terms of service for data use. It doesn't think about algorithmic bias, doesn't think about dark patterns, uh, doesn't think about a whole lot of other potential nefarious uh, uh, uses. Um, businesses um, that leverage mass amounts of data generate uh, harms, um, and those harms potentially include civil rights violations or equal opportunity violations or uh, the proliferation of misinformation politically or otherwise, uh, harms to competition um, and just an assortment of other ways in which data is exploited um, all under the name of consent and notice and choice. Um, over collection also uh, by this um, surveillance business model um, as she refers to it has its problems. Um, when you collect too much data, uh, there's increased severity and uh, increased risk uh, if and when you breach. Um, oftentimes, this uh, misuse of data uh, fuels misinformation uh, in, in campaigns and how they target people and, and how they advertise to those people. Um, and, um, and so, um, um, you know, she questions on why we're thinking specifically in that lane. Um, focusing only on privacy, as she, as she puts it. Um, and privacy being the sharing of PI without notice, choice, or consent, um, doesn't consider the massive data collection that fuels this surveillance data model. Um, and, um, and so she uh, 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 is challenging us to think about other things. Um, and so as we think about that, um, you know, let's talk about the notice and choice model, right? Once upon a time, the notice and choice uh, framework was a sensible way uh, uh, that the basic consumer protection principles to privacy were established, right? You tell customers what you're doing with their data, you secure their uh, consent, and you keep your promises. Pretty simple. And historically, that's the manner in which the FTC um, enforced uh, that kind of behavior and those kinds of principles. Um, and they went after companies who were in violation 
uh, of the FDA, FTC Act deception principles, right? Um, and so um, it seemed like that that was all good. Um, but um, as I've alluded to, and as I'll talk about a little bit more, there are problems associated with that model. Um, one, notice only happens mostly in really lengthy, wordy, click-through contracts. Um, few people read them, few people understand them, and at best, um, choice is illusionary. Um, notice and choice also doesn't address the surviving marketing, excuse me, doesn't address the surveillance marketing model uh, that drives digital advertising. And I alluded to this before. Data regimes built entirely on notice and choice perpetuate this unfairness because it accepts the idea that companies are entitled to collect a lot of information about a user as long as they tell them that's what they're doing and as long as they're honest about using it. Um, and so um, with those flaws in mind um, and with the history uh, in mind, um, the commissioner suggests that we look at other models. Um, and she believes that a more effective solution is based around data minimization rather than notice and choice. Um, that, um, you know, the concept of data minimization, as we all know, um, uh, is modeled around the collection of information that's only necessary, only using information that's necessary to provide consumers with the service or product that they've actually requested. Um, and that the use of that data is only used for the purpose of which it was collected. Um, and that the use of that data is further coupled with uh, alternative uses, uh, restrictions on alternative uses, restricted on sharing, uh, restrictions on sharing, and of course, security requirements and protocols to protect the data. Um, from her point of view, this data minimization um, uh, model does a couple things, one of which it minimizes the amount of data that's available. Um, and so um, it takes uh, the edge away from this data uh, surveillance model on, on the advertising industry. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. More importantly, that um, because you're collecting less information, um, you know, this uh, protects, uh, protects the amount of data that's exposed in a breach um, and in many respects um, helps protect individual consumers um, uh, uh, privacy rights. So um, as we think about this advertising, surveillance advertising model, um, uh, and it sounds as though the commissioner is attacking that industry, when in fact, I don't think that she is, she's thinking about a different way to approach it. Um, and her suggestion to the group, uh, to the conference was that we shift away from this micro-targeting model and move more towards a contextual advertising model for advertising. Uh, prohibiting advertising uh, ad, ad networks from indiscriminately collecting so much data blocks the marketing profiles, right? So um, uh, while it, uh, that seems uh, confrontational at first, um, I think um, the point to make is that she's not challenging the model of advertising supported, um, uh, adver advertising supported services. We've had a rich tradition of this in our country. We do it with radio, we do it with television, we do it with newspapers. Um, and and um, and that model can certainly, in her opinion, be extended uh, to the internet and to um, uh, to the ad tech business that that we're also familiar with now. Um, the big difference uh, in this approach is that uh, that uh, traditional ad supported models and the and the, this current surveillance model is that this new model trades consumers' data for their services, not for their attention. Right. So in television at radio uh, uh, and print, um, your consent, you know, you, you, you get uh, television commercials to, to see TV for free, um, but um, it doesn't limit the television that you get to watch. Um, and I think she's trying to solve for that problem. Um, the last thing is that um, 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 she believes that um, uh, federal legislation is really important and impactful for the FTC to be able to do their job efficiently. Um, she thinks that legislation would, and, and I would agree with her, would set clear rules, clear rules of, uh, of, of engagement uh, and uh, empower the FTC uh, with, um, you know, with the ability to, uh, uh, to police abuses um, and, um, and to adapt to changing market uh, um, uh, practices. In the absence of federal legislation, the FTC certainly is not without its own tools. Um, and uh, they will continue to tackle enforcement for unfair business practices. But the one-off enforcement cases uh, really limits the FTC um, and their ability to, 
to, to effectively change uh, the playing field. Um, and, um, and that, um, you know, having the full support of a federal framework behind, uh, behind the FTC uh, would certainly make a big difference in the way in which uh, they're able to do their job. So, uh, you know, key takeaways on this, um, you know, consent uh, may not be the way we should be uh, focusing. Um, uh, that data minimization is, you know, is the key to success. Um, and that uh, the advertising industry should think about ways in which that they can offer an honest and open value proposition with their consumers and still have the ability to make money. Um, and that we need a federal privacy framework to sew this all together. So lots to think about. Uh, please go to uh, the link uh, and read the commissioner's full remarks. Um, uh, there will be a lot of conversation around this uh, in the coming weeks and months. Um, we'll see where all this goes. Um, uh, but again, never a dull moment in, uh, in privacy. So again, thank you for uh, tuning into our weekly privacy roll-up. Uh, I hope you'll join me again next week when we talk about the latest and greatest that's happened the week before. Um, please watch Wirewheel's LinkedIn page for uh, future dates and times for our next broadcast. And of course, as always, if you have questions about today's content or any other privacy related issues, um, you can email us at marketing at wirewheel.io. So thanks again for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.